the FUD factor, F-U-D. Okay, so this is from my book on page 50. And uh, the FUD factor, F-U-D, is an acronym, and it stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So I'll read this to you as it is in my book, and then I'll do my best to help expand it just a little bit and help you understand this. So the FUD factor kills more sales than anything else. And I'll show you how to counteract that. So the FUD factor stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And every prospective buyer, if they're a really good prospect, they have all three of those things. Uh, but they're never going to mention it. So it's up to you to be aware of these destructive negative emotions and develop the right sales messages to overcome them. Uh, so the minds of the average prospect are so filled with fear. This is, these are good prospects now. The, the minds of the average prospect are so filled with fear, uncertainty, and doubt that it's amazing most salespeople can't see it. So let me drive this point home. The people you sell to don't trust you. The only thing they care about is themselves and what they can be led to believe that you and your product and your service will do to make their lives even better. Now, that may sound cynical. I don't care how it sounds. Uh, I'm sure it doesn't apply in all situations. But for the most part, even your best prospects that you have really good rapport with, they don't really care about you. They, they care about you only to the extent that you can give them what they want. You can be friendly with them, very friendly with them, but you can never really be friends with them until they stop becoming your clients. <laughs> Once that relationship factor is over, you don't have to perform for them. But, but, um, but there is a certain level of performance that you have to do with them. And you can love your customers or love your clients. But, um, but the bottom line is you're here to, you know, give them what they want. And look, peep, even the best people. So I know this sounds a little, uh, this, this does sound a little bit uh, cynical when we start talking about how selfish people are. Well, even the best people, the ones that are most unselfish, when it comes to spending money, those same people can be like animals. Um, and I've seen people do things that are very animalistic. You know, uh, selling from the platform. I remember uh, one time, well, I've seen it with other speakers, so, but I actually experienced it myself on more than one occasion, where they rushed, you make them a special offer that's so good and so limited that they just rush the stage and they, they basically just like somebody running out of a, out of a stadium that's on fire or something like that. I mean, it's just, uh, but no, when it comes to spending money, people can be very selfish, very self-centered. And they're, people are nice enough not to tell you, I don't trust you. But if you're picking up on it when you talk to them, if you're very, if you're aware of it, you can sense it, you can pick up on it. And I even address it with customers. I do. I, I say to them, um, you know, the problem is you just don't trust me. Uh, I get really bold with people like that. And, Oh no, no, I trust you. I trust you. No, come on. You've got doubts. You've got your, you don't believe everything uh, about this opportunity or this offer or whatever. I, I just, you know, why, why beat around? If you've got enough leverage with somebody, you can talk to them like that and you can just get down to the heart of the matter. Uh, one time I had this cl uh, client of mine. He goes, you know, TJ, this is a good client, a guy that was spending a lot of money. He goes, you know, I only believe one out of every five words you say. And I said, what? And I asked him to repeat himself, and I wrote it down. I said, hold on a minute. And I wrote that down, hung it up on my wall. You know, because I think what he was saying is something that a lot of people are too nice to say. He was trying to say it in a cute, clever way, which it is. You know, I only believe one out of every five words you're saying. In other words, I don't believe you as far as I can throw you. And yet it didn't stop him from doing business with, with me, and it won't stop your best prospects from doing business with you. However, if you start with the premise that they don't believe you, if you start with the premise that they don't trust you, if you start with the premise that they're filled with this F-U-D, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, 
And you're going to be light years ahead of most salespeople and most marketers who just blindly assume that just because they love the product or service or because the customers are reacting somewhat favorably, that that means they're totally sold on it. They're not. They're not. Even when they give you their money, they're, they're still full of doubts and fears and all of that kind of stuff. Better to just tackle it head on. Get a little leverage with them, and you'll do that by using our marketing system. So our marketing systems are all about bringing people to you that are heavily pre-sold and ready to buy, and then you're just taking them the rest of the way, upselling them, cross-selling them, and getting them set up for the next sale. So I hope something I've said here has made a difference to you. I hope that you won't make the same mistake that a lot of other sales people and marketers are making. Realize just how fearful, uncertain, and how many doubts they have and counteract that. Uh, thank you, and um, bye for now.